Today I've got some practical stuff to show you for the Raptor 2 RC build. I've managed to get the whole thing printed and assembled and I've now pretty much got a test block that I can use just to kind of uncover any design flaws that I may have missed during the design process. The main thing it's going to be useful for really is 3D printing shafts and couplers. Now I'm not too keen on this idea, I've got to be honest, I, c I can't really see them surviving given the talk involved here, but I'm going to try it anyway. A lot of people have already kind of said to me, you know, it's never going to work, especially with PTG. And I, I'm kind of agreeing with that, to be honest, but maybe I'll be wrong. I don't know. So I'm going to show you some footage of the tests and we'll see how it goes. So let's jump into it. So this is the front subframe of Raptor 2, and this is going to serve as a great testing block mainly to try and get somewhere with the coupling and the drive shafts. But overall, I've made a few changes here already, which I've kind of encountered with a test block. Nothing too significant, just little things that make things fit a little better. Now I want to draw more attention towards this here, which is obviously the coupling and the drive shafts. For this part of the design, for this kind of test, I've taken a lot of inspiration from the Tarmo 4 project. So if you haven't checked that out, Go on YouTube, search Tarmo 4. It's another great uh, 3D printed RC. But I figured, you know, if people are having success with that, it makes sense to try that myself, see if it works for my design. Um, I'm going to use PTG instead of PLA. Uh, and I just want to see if it can handle the torque from my setup. So I'm going to give that a shot. So let's get those printed and we'll see how it does. So this is the front subframe test block fully assembled after 3D printing and I'm really quite happy with how this turned out. It looks really clean. It did take a few iterations for some of the hinge and the knuckle parts just to get the tolerances correct as 3D printing can be a little tricky with the tolerances. The gears I'm actually tremendously impressed with especially after doing the testing. I think these are going to hold up a lot better than people think. As you can see, I've opted for roller bearings for additional stability, and you can see the caster in action there as well as I rotate the knuckle. The knuckle is really loose at the moment, but it's only because I haven't tightened those M5 nuts. Geometry all seems okay for such an early prototype. For now, I'm gonna keep it at a neutral camber just because I want something built that's testable, and I can add that stuff later on. Onto the shaft and the couplers then, I got those 3D printed, and I've inserted some M3 bolts through the ends, and cut those off. That then just inserts straight into the coupler and you've got a little bit of motion there. Now I tested a few different types of coupler. We've got this one which doesn't have open ends and I've also tried an open-ended one which did seem to work better which you'll see later in the video. It all is really quite straightforward to install. Everything just slots in. You can see there that the gears and the motor all spin freely and they drive the axles quite nicely. This was the very first test I did so I was kind of gentle with it and I kind of slowly let it creep up in speed. But I held onto the knuckle and just gave it a blast and it seemed to hold together quite well, which you'd expect because there's no load on the end. So the next step was to add the wheel on and see what happened. Immediately I noticed that there was a bit of friction here and you could just feel it in your hands, particularly when the knuckle was angled. But, you know, I thought I'd give it a blast anyway and you can see what happens. One thing that's pretty obvious here is that there's a limit to the steering angle with this kind of setup. So without the steering rods attached, the wheel is kind of free to just wobble around. And that does introduce a lot of forces that you'll see the result of in a second. You can see there, as soon as I gave it some power and there was a bit of force acting against it, it just blew it to shreds. So I think a large part of this was to do with the closed coupler. So what I tried next was to open up the ends and see how that performed. So here you can see the changes I made to the coupler design. I've just opened up the slots on the end, which should reduce that nasty jolting that you saw in the previous clip. I think it's important here to emphasize that I'm being gentle with it, right? I'm not applying any serious torque. I'm just kind of ramping it up and letting it run. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. Now for the real test, I'm going to let this run with the wheel, ramp up the RPM and see what happens.
even there, we're not on max RPM because I'm kind of trying not to be hit by plastic shrapnel at the same time. So um, now I'm actually just going to try and apply pure torque from a standstill and see how that goes. So as you saw there in the video, PTG seems to be a problem for the forces involved here. This is a lot of torque. You know, these little plastic parts, I just don't think they're gonna hold up to it. So as you saw there, I kept the knuckle straight. At lower speeds, if you're really gentle with it, it's fine. But as soon as you put that power down and you introduce a serious amount of torque, it just ripped it to shreds. This isn't a one-off either. I've broken a few already. You can see I actually broke a uh, axle and I've broken a few more of these couplers as well. The plastic just isn't up to the job. There's probably a few things I could still try. You can see that if I swivel this a little bit, the diameter of these is quite small, but I'm limited in terms of what I can do here because I've got these M5 nylock nuts, which provide the knuckle of the steering. So I'm pretty much on the limit there in terms of my diameter, unless I increase the height of the suspension arms, which I don't really want to do because when you put the wheel on here, you obviously need that clearance to make sure you're not going to hit anything. So where do we go from here? Well, there's a few things I could try. I could try printing these in nylon. Nylon is a lot stronger than PETG, but it is a bit of a pain to print with as well. I've never printed with it before and I'm not sure if my printers can actually print in nylon so I'm gonna to have to do a bit of research on that. And the other option is to actually get these 3D printed in metal. Now I've already ordered some new dog bone steel axles to replace these. The reason I went to do that is because as I said before I've already broken one. The main benefit to the steel ones as well is that they're a lot thinner so these are quite thick. The end part here of these shafts determines how much steering angle you get. So you can imagine that's in there. So there's gonna be a point where the end of the coupler hits this part. So the thinner this part, the more steering angle you get. And obviously, you know, I wanna get as much steering angle as possible because it, it, it results in a better car overall. And you don't have to worry about more breakages. As I said, the other option I've got is to get these 3D printed in metal. These parts are actually quite small. As you can see, they're really not a huge part. So I'm gonna go online, get a quote for getting these printed in metal. It's gonna cost a bit, but it's not gonna be excessive, uh, mainly because they're small parts and they shouldn't take that long. Interestingly as well, the coupler up here seems to be absolutely fine. And I think the reason for that is because the only kind of angle changes it's experiencing are these ones up and down, whereas this coupler on the end is obviously experiencing additional angles and additional forces when you rotate the knuckle. I think it's really important that we have a strong material here to handle those forces and to stop these breakages from happening. Another thing I'm gonna play around with is these steel dog bone couplers. So I've had these for a while. I've used them in previous videos of the Raptor project. But what I'm thinking is, you can see here, obviously I bolt the wheel on from this side. You can see I've got a nylock nut in there which holds that on. So if I extend that bolt out a little bit and flatten one of the edges, I may be able to use the grub screw on here and just couple this to the, the bolt itself. And that way I'd essentially just be replacing that with the steel one. So I'm gonna see if I can get away with something cheeky like that. It'd be great if I could, because it'd save me having to buy the 3D printed steel ones. As for this one up here, I think I'm gonna leave this one plastic for the time being. The main reason is because I've got a lot of wiggle room here in terms of the diameter that I can go with. I've gone with a relatively small diameter here for this, pretty much the same as this one, but I can go a lot bigger because I've got more clearance here between the arms. So I think we can get away with this one. This one, definitely needs to be a stronger material because it's, as I said, it's undergoing those additional forces and the plastic, I, I just don't think it's gonna cut it. The other option, of course, is to go for an axle like this that you can just slot in and you've got a lot more room there anyway for steering and all that kind of stuff. They're basically built for it. You've got the universal joint on the end. Something like this, I think, would be better. But as I said, it's early days. I have so many options available to me. I might try, try and test out a few. I'm also keen to see what you guys think. If you've got any ideas or things I haven't thought of, leave them in the comments below. I always read the comments and a lot of you have actually had some good input into this vehicle itself. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel out a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.